Hello, welcome everyone. I'm Mike Cook with RevLocal and I'll be your webinar moderator today. For those of you who are not as familiar with RevLocal, uh, we are a premier Google partner. We've been on a mission to revolutionize the local marketing industry since 2010. And our goal is to lead the transition towards local search marketing. Today, we provide personalized digital marketing solutions to many local businesses and multi-location brands across the United States. Thank you for taking the time to attend our webinar, Boost Your Business, Marketing Insights with RevLocal and Google. Next up is the regional sales manager of RevLocal for Austin, San Antonio, Chicago, and their surrounding areas, John Bean. All right, guys. I know it seems like a lot for you guys. Uh, we just want to make sure that we're maintaining. These are just things that the minute you decide you want to start your business, or maybe you're just realizing in your 10 or 15 years in, you're kind of thinking to yourself, man, we really haven't utilized all these tools around us to get in front of people. Now is the time for you guys to kind of take a step, um, especially in the middle of COVID and all these things. More people are now online uh, now more than ever. Um, so I am going to go over again, uh, just a couple of different uh, marketing insights uh, with Rev Local, our company, uh, as it relates to Google. We're going to go in a little bit to how to optimize your Google My Business listing, utilizing paid ads, retargeting, and, and different strategies, and, and also a little bit on how to leverage social media as well overall for your business. So uh, that yeah, that is me. Uh, of course, I'm actually the regional sales manager for Rev Local uh, out here in Austin and San Antonio areas of Texas, and then. Uh, not only Chicago, but all of Illinois as well. Um, I do have uh, just short of 10 years experience in digital marketing, and I can promise you it has changed so much, honestly, just in the last year. Um, so uh, there's going to be a, a lot to cover here, and I'll do my best. And again, post your questions in the Q&A, and we'll, we'll do our best to get to them for you. So um, thank you again. Getting to it, all about Google search and optimizing your listing. We'll kind of start there. One of the main things is laying the foundation for all of this, because I'm going to get the paid ads in a little bit. Right. We're going to talk about that. That's that's more uh, uh, direct, more uh, aggressive business, if you will. And it works exceptionally well. But you need to make sure that you have a great foundation built in the digital sense, if you will. So uh, you need to make sure that everything that you're doing for your business in real time is fully reflective online before people get to you. OK, uh, Google, first and foremost. Uh, that's the first line of defense, and it's the main hub uh, for where you guys need to make sure everything's optimized correctly. Three and a half billion searches every single day happen on Google, right? Three and a half billion. Really think about that. Process that for a second, right? That's how often people are doing these searches throughout the day. While we're talking right now, I can assure you someone's already looking for the services that your business provides. And I think that's one of the other big uh, disconnects that I typically notice with business owners, right? As I break down the anatomy of a search here, the paid ads or paid ads are always at the top, right? The pay to play section. Then it's the local search results, right? Relevant, uh, prominent section where businesses need to be appearing, uh, the top three, as we kind of refer to it. Um, and then we have the organic search results kind of at the bottom there. Now, I want to point out that if you are, say, Jim's Tire Shop, all right? Uh, regardless of what your business is. You could be the tire shop. You could be a law firm. It, it all pertains to you. And when I talk to Jim about his tire shop, Jim always thinks, the business owner always thinks, oh, well, people are going to type in Jim's tire shop. No, no, no. If you want to grow your business online in the digital sense, you need to be worrying about how many people are searching for your services. So Jim needs to be worrying about when they typed in tire, did Jim's tire shop pop up? Okay. Seems like it's a, a, a common sense thing, but it's so crucial. People are searching for your services at a high clip. Where are you showing as it relates to those different things? Okay, now, again, paid ads is the pay to play section, but that local search piece, that's the foundation of how you're found. And it isn't just about being in the top three, all right? It's not even about being number one. It's about being a more prominent option. How can you drive yourself up those rankings? How can you consistently show up, okay? Uh, local search, again, foundational piece. And then the paid ads at the top, which we'll get into, um, can be used to hyper-target uh, areas in several different ways. But uh, 
here's just a little overall view, uh, local versus organic SEO. The organic SEO is really about raising your website's placement and search results. Um, again, that's the bottom section. Example is if you're an e-commerce retailer or anyone trying to get more online sales, then obviously that local SEO, uh, uh, from a local SEO standpoint, that's about visibility on local search. That's about being in the top three, or at least when people click uh, uh, you know, more examples, they want to see more than just the top three. You want to at least be in that top 10, worst case scenario, okay? Um, but I want to touch a little bit about how to get started um, and, and, and what these factors are, right? Um, before you get into, hey, well, maybe I don't even have a GMB listing. Here's just a couple of the factors. We got citation signals, on-page signals, uh, reviews, obviously factored into this as well. That's all about validation. Um, the Google My Business signals, social signals, uh, personalization as well. Okay, so there's a lot of factors that go into uh, these rankings here and how they're impacted. This is not something you just put up and you flip a switch and then it's done in the morning, okay? A lot of people call us not only for peace of mind so you can get back to running your business, but they call us not only to create the Google My Business pages, but for those of you who have existing pages, we need to make sure that you're optimized, okay, correctly. So overall, getting started, you do want to create and claim your listing if you don't already have one, okay? Um, you want to search for your business name to ensure that obviously the listing hasn't already been made. Some of you might even be owners that are uh, have acquired said business that's been around for X amount of years. You don't know how many listings are floating, floating around. You want to do that search. Um, so. Again, if you don't have a Google My Business, you can start one now while I'm even talking. Um, <laughs> go ahead and get the verification process started. Uh, for those of you who have existing Google My Business pages, you want to make sure it's optimized correctly. Name, number, address, hours. Um, if you have a website URL, which you all should, uh, make sure your categories are in line. You want to make sure that uh, your actual business description of the business is in line as well. Okay. Um, uh, your services list, that needs to be consistent. You want to make sure you have high quality images. Remember, this is the first line of defense. People see this, even for those of you that have a, a storefront, people are seeing you online now more than ever, more than they are driving past your storefront. I can assure you, this is huge, okay? It's foundational. And again, for those of you who have a Google My Business and you're like, hey, you know what, John, I've got an exceptional word of mouth. We've been killing it for 15 years. Why do we need to do any level uh, of online marketing or worry about our online presence. It's not about how many people came in last week. I promise you, it's about how many people missed you because you weren't utilizing these things. Okay. And it happens all the time. Strong word of mouth. And that's great. You have to be worried about the people who don't know who you are so you can have their word of mouth too. Okay. Uh, so just a thought there. Again, uh, you want to get the verification process started. Um, and then if you have an existing listing, make sure everything is as consistent as humanly possible. OK, um, you want to make sure your information is up to date. Keep in mind, I know we're going through uh, COVID. You guys are all in different regions of the country. Um, you've probably changed your hours of operation so many times. It's making your head spin. Well, make sure that when you make those changes, that they, that it's reflected fully on any and all directories, right? Starting from a Google, your Google My Business page, are the hours up to date? I can't tell you how many times uh, myself and even my fiance, we're looking around for somewhere to eat in the area and we can't tell who's actually dine in versus curbside because they haven't marked it correctly on their GMB page, okay? You have to make sure this information is up to date with where you guys are week to week, month to month, okay? Um, so again, uh, you want to make sure that everything's edited and, and correct. Weekly Google posts, that's something else you guys can do to manage your listing. It's already there. It's at your fingertips. That's something we make sure that we keep up with at Rev Local as much as humanly possible. Um, I always say you need to be doing one to two posts every single month. Um, and really using this section to share news updates, promotional events, um, any new product releases, anything of that, that nature. Um, and, you know, I won't dig too far into it, uh, but reviews are so huge. Um, you should not only be requesting it, uh, reviews from your customers, but you need to be replying to them as well. If someone took the time out of their day to leave your business a review, the least you could do as a business owner or as a company overall, if you wanna assign it to someone else, because I get that you're busy, you need to be replying to those reviews, right? Just a quick thank you at the very least. 
it's huge. And other people, other consumers, your potential customers, they notice when there's no reply from the business owner. And that's something, you know, here at Revlopal, we also try to tell people and remind them as much as possible. We, we want to make sure that there's an attention, not just on generating the reviews, but responding to them as well. So that's all part of the validation of your business. Again, you might be the absolute best law firm in the, in the, in the city. You might be the best yoga instructor in the city. You might be the best at whatever you do. The quality of the services that you have been providing for your business, whether it be the last five months or the last 10 years, if you've been around that long, it has to be fully reflective online through these channels. It's the only way to bring it home. So uh, just a couple of thoughts there. I'm going to move on and talk a little bit more about paid ads and how you can best utilize them. OK, um, now uh, paid ads, for those of you, maybe you, you tried it on your own and perhaps you had a bad experience. That's usually happens sometimes and people come to us and have us manage it because it is not a, a flip of the switch again. Right. This takes detail. Um, you actually have to build the content out. We we have a graphic team, a design team that does these things and customizes it to fit the flexibility of what the business owner actually needs. So from a Google search standpoint for Google search ads overall, um, you need to be researching this, right? We need to know the difference between uh, research space and maybe a needed now industry, right? It depends on the business. Uh, you need to be able to meet the demand of people searching for your products and services. And yes, you will be prominently at the top of that page but really, we're breaking it down based off of, OK, what zip codes do we want to target and what actual services we need to target as well. So it needs to be a combination of that when it comes to the Google search ads. Um, and again, this is pay per click. OK, now, 65 percent of small to mid medium sized businesses have a PPC campaign, but it's not only what the budget is because. We have people that come to us and they're extremely small businesses and they start with maybe a thousand to maybe a fifteen hundred dollar a month budget. Because a lot of cases when people say, hey, I did a, a, a I did an ad spin and it went horrible. Usually you had a budget that wasn't even close to where you needed to hit. You need to invest time in the proper budget to make put you guys in the right direction. Because if you're only doing, hey, I did one hundred and fifty or two hundred dollars this month for my PPC budget, it's just not enough for a lot of you companies uh, just from a pay-per-click standpoint. So just a thought there, you want to have the right spin and then it's about how you run the actual campaign. So uh, one other thing I should bring up, um, these, there's different types of ads. So there's local service ads too. The difference is this is pay-per-lead. Now this doesn't apply to everybody on here, but I should bring it up because it's a huge piece when you see the Google guaranteed and that green check mark. This is really for all of our contractors or technicians out there. They've also started it for real estate agents, right? Um, uh, real estate brokerages in different areas of the country, um, law firms and financial services. It's starting to open up with the local service ads. Primarily contractors is, is, is national now. Um, but this is paper lead, uh, not paper click. Um, it opens to a Google created page. Um, I can't begin to tell you how important this is. You typically need an even bigger budget for this, but because it's paper lead, it benefits you greatly. And I have several small, very small businesses that started out with a PPC budget and we converted them over to the local service ads and they are killing it. They're getting more than enough back <laughs> on a month to month basis, whether it be a $2,000, $2,500 spend, never look and hear the budget or the spend and go, oh, well, that's just gotta be too much. It's all about what you're getting back for that as you build this up and build that trust with Google over time. So uh, just a thought there, um, local service ads for any of my contractors, big or small, uh, I can assure you uh, it's about how you utilize the pay-per-click in the local service ads uh, in terms of consistency to drive those results. Now, overall paid advertising, we also have competitor ads. This is showing up as an alternative option when customers are searching for your, your well-known competitors. You want to use their brand power to boost your name recognition. And it happens all the time. Like when I type in, if I'm looking for, um, uh, it could be a law firm, um, lawyers, dentists, extremely competitive. And you don't realize someone's running a competitive ad against your business, right? You, you Meanwhile, you haven't run ads at all. And you're like, oh, ads don't work. And your competitors are, are killing you on it, right? And again, when you're running these ads, whether it be a competitor ad or otherwise, um, and you can target the larger competitors, choose a couple of companies or what have you. But this is not about trying to take over the entire state. Start with your own backyard in your city. 
start with a couple of zip codes in and around uh, your business and do what makes sense and start hitting those areas that you know you want to target where your customers are. Because I promise you, people are clicking on these ads at a high rate, even while we're talking. OK, um, now. One other thing I would like to uh, talk about just briefly is retargeting ads. Um, Retargeting ads are huge. Right now, it's happening for all of us. Uh, For those of you, you should be on Facebook, um, uh, either personally and certainly for your business. Um, Facebook, uh, Instagram, any of those different things. You want to make sure that retargeting is consistent with your business. That means the prospect click, customer enters your site, as you can see in the diagram here. Then you track the said customer. And then when they go to Facebook or they go to another platform, that banner pops up again because they engage with you the first time. You've retargeted said individual, right? Um, so those retargeting ads, uh, for instance, I mentioned my fiance, I actually have diamond rings up and down my Facebook feed right now. And you know what? The people I went with happened to be someone who retargeted me on one of the ads. And I went with those people. They got my business because they stayed in front of me after I initiated going to their website. That's what retargeting is for. It works all the time, okay? Um, So just a thought there, that's something you wanna get in front of the consumer as much as humanly possible until they actually make their decision, okay? Um, That's super key here. And by the way, again, as we're moving into the paid ads pieces of uh, of this, for those of you who are thinking, oh, well, I personally don't click on ads, so I just don't need it for my business. This isn't about what you think from that standpoint. This is about utilizing all the tools around you. If you maybe don't like Facebook and can't stand Facebook, personally, completely understand. But from a professional standpoint, you have to be utilizing it, right? This is about your consumer base and all of you, every single person on here. You don't have a potential customer that's not on Google and Facebook continuously. So um, retargeting, another huge way. I should say 70% uh, of site visitors who are actually retargeted with display ads they're 70% more likely to actually convert to your site. Think about that. If you had just retargeted them, there's a seven in 10 chance that they're likely to convert back to your site. And when you look at your website clicks, and I challenge you to do so, go to your website clicks and say, oh, okay, well, maybe you have six, 700 clicks, what have you for the month. How many of those clicks converted? There's gonna be a massive gap in that number. And you have to wonder if they made it to your site, where did they go? I'll tell you where they went. They went to your competitor. This is why you should stay in front of the consumers by any and all means uh, that makes sense, right? You have to be efficient with this stuff. So pay-per-click ads, pay-per-lead ads uh, uh, for those local service ads for some of you contractors, realtors, and whatnot out there, um, and then the retargeting piece. Um, That said, I want to talk a little bit more about social media um, and figuring out perhaps what social media channel is best for your industry, okay? Uh, We wanna talk a little bit about which channel you should be using based on your target audience, the goals and your products and services. And it's it's a little bit different for for all of you guys, but one of the mainstays obviously here is Facebook, okay? (laughs) Every business should have a Facebook page. And I I, kind of hinted at this earlier, again, personally, whether you like it or not, you have to have one built out. So it's one of the first steps that we do at Rev Local. Like we look at, even if we're handling your Google stuff, we, we work with you on at least making sure you have a Facebook page, okay? Starting out minute one, okay? Um, typically it's the generation X, Y, but the, the big thing and big takeaway here is Facebook acts like a search engine, right? Um, it, it's almost like a, a mini website, if you will. Um, there's boosted posts. There's a lot of different things that you can do here. Uh, some of those ads I talked about that were run on Google, some of those can be run on, on Facebook at a, a smaller level too. Um, Google's just kind of the king of all of it because we Google everything. Um, but you need to have a Facebook page and you should be utilizing it to the best of, of your ability. One of the next pieces here is, is LinkedIn, uh, the largest networking site uh, for professional and, and personal use. A, a lot of you guys that um, uh, might be a B2B uh, in terms of your business, you might want to uh, take a look at LinkedIn and making sure that is absolutely magnificent in terms of how you're utilizing it uh, and to be able to get in front of those other businesses that you want to see. So, yes, you can promote your service and products on LinkedIn, uh, inform your audience with updates. And then obviously for anyone, if you guys do, are doing any level of job recruiting, uh, that's an obvious one. So uh, there's the LinkedIn. Now, Instagram visuals. <laughs> I can't drive it home enough. 
Um, I'm a believer now that from a business standpoint, you really at the very least need a Facebook and an Instagram, and you should be able to do a collective post uh, to each. Um, so just think about that. Um, Facebook and Instagram for your business and just uh, uh, equal the posts on either. Um, don't overcomplicate it uh, at least two to three times a week uh, from a post standpoint. The audience for Instagram typically is women between 16 and 40. But, you know, I don't want to get too far into the demographics of it because the truth is, even if that's not your demographic and your audience, I promise you can use it to your benefit. So uh, it's just more about consistency posting and knowing uh, your target audience. But uh, establishing a theme, uh, color palette, some of the other things you can actually do is this is overall about raising brand awareness. It's about building relationships. And again, it, it doesn't matter if you personally like Instagram or not like Instagram from a business standpoint. You need to be in front of these people and it opens you up to a different channel of consumers that would love to use your services. OK, um, now, as I wrap things up, a couple of key takeaways. We want to make sure you're auditing your online presence overall, uh, creating and optimizing your GMB, uh, generating new reviews and then, of course, responding to them as well. Um, these are things, again, that Rev Local, we, we pride ourselves on in helping uh, business owners because, again, you guys are busy. And we want you to be able to focus on the business and have a peace of mind and knowing that uh, you're optimized, your visibility is high, you're being taken care of and leads are coming in from a paid ads perspective as well. Um, so expand your reach with, with paid ads. Uh, feel free to reach out to experts like ourselves to do so if you're struggling with that or if you have any questions about it. Um, retargeting strategy, huge piece. It's happening to all of us right now and it does work. Uh, and scheduling out those social posts. So. Um, I'm going to wrap things up here and, and, and simply say, um, feel free, please um, uh, reach out to a, a digital marketing consultant near you. I, I, I'm personally, uh, again, Illinois and then Austin to San Antonio, but uh, find a digital marketing consultant near you. If we don't get to your question for whatever reason, because there's probably a lot coming in, uh, we want to make sure unequivocally that we get that question answered and that we do a di diagnostic, a free diagnostic, if you will, on your business and really look things over. Um, no matter how small you are, no matter how big you are, um, or if you're just scaling the right way, uh, I can promise you it's about how we utilize the strategy uh, and take those steps moving forward. So thank you, guys.